Hey, uh, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And I'm dead inside. And welcome to Peter Pan. Oh, shit, I don't even know where. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't even know where our book is. Welcome to the first episode of Peter Pan, the first chapter, the beginning of a whole new adventure. Wow. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be an awfully big adventure. I'm, I'm ex- nice. Sick reference, bro. I <laughs> personally am very, very excited to be on to another book finally. So, yes. Like I'm, I could barely even sit down. This should take us about a year and a half though to finish. Stop. So. Don't say that. She just jinxed us. No, I didn't. We're going to like lose our book or something. <laughs> no. <laughs> And like literally for the most part just stays here or over there. Yeah. So it'd be funny if we like lost our book. We do want to start this episode off though with a bang and something fun that we're going to do for everyone that is a part of our Patreon. Again, that's at patreon.com slash dead inside hashtag plug (laughs) is we're going to put every single Patreon's name on one of these little leaves and then hang it up on the back. I was going to say we're going to. De- they're gonna decorate the tree, but that's not really right. Like when they're we're, they're gonna foliage, they're gonna fill the tree. You guys are becoming know. a part of the set, part of the set, part of the fiend, part of the club, part of the group. One of us, one of us. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna, as it stands right now, we're just gonna kind of show the fiend book club members. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not gonna show every single person's name being filled out, unless you want to. We could just do cuts. We could fill out everyone's name and be like, pew, pew, pew. What do you want to do? I don't know. I feel like if we did every single Patreon member, I feel like that might get a little bit. I, I guess first it's going to be just a for lot. the first episode, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think we do. I think we say whose name it is and where they're going at the very least. You mean where they're going? On the tree. Oh, okay. Like we could be like, oh. Ashley Shepard, you're going here. Bailey Butler, you're going here. Bookish, you're going here. So people, because you can't see the name oh, okay. I see from so saying. far away on the camera, so that when their leaf is put up, that they're like, "That's where my leaf is." I think I would, that's cool. No, I would. Wa- good- I would want to know where my leaf was. No, one hundred percent. That's a good idea. I just. But that might just you- be the Leo in me. <laughs> Um, I just didn't know where you were going with that for a second. What do you mean? I don't know. What do you mean where I was going? My head's full of air. I don't know. All right, we're going to fill these out. Okay, so the first one we're putting up was also the first member of the Fiend Book Club. How exciting. How exciting. (laughs) (laughs) My leg's asleep right now, so I'm (laughs) distracted. Yeah, my left leg is asleep, too. (laughs) Re! So this is where yours is going. Beautiful. Thank you. We just do fanfare trumpet every time. (laughs) The next one I have is Nicole. I can put it like up here. You can put it anywhere. We make the rules. And then next we have. Sarah Jessica um, <laughs> Parker, <laughs> which is also an OG, write me poetry. Right here? Where's the cutoff line? Like there, I guess. Huh? I guess we could do them upside down. It has to be something like that. Loki1521. Moving into OG territory. Nate Perkins. Kelly Law or K Law or Claw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time she's in the stream, I'm like, what's up, Claw? <laughs> I think that maybe, I don't know if she like meant to do that or not, but it makes me laugh after I realized her name. Once it all came together, I really hope that was intentional, but also at the same time, 
I hope that it wasn't intentional yeah. and you like love it all the more. You're like, fuck, that is cool. <laughs> Another OG. Sashley. <laughs> fuck. We're running out of room. We are not running out of room. <laughs> I've got a, a name I'm a little scared to pronounce. Megan Taglilatala. Missing. Taglilatella? 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 That really just sounds like you're saying Nutella to me. Megan Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> you're free to legally change your name. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a notification on Patreon. Megan has changed her patronage to zero. <laughs> My name's not Megan Nutella. <laughs> this is fucking thirsty work. I better get my coffee, my caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's inside? Is it chaos, perhaps? It's chaos. Caffeine and chaos. I have to put this on in the most chaotic way possible. Oh my god. How? I don't know, but you're making me nervous. We need like metal music. I'm getting old. Not used to head banging. Next week. I fucking slap the lights into another setting. Holy shit, yeah, you did. What the fuck? Next, we're gonna get. Two birds stoned. It's <laughs> JDPC and Eco. Fuck. Eco, you don't even have to become a patron. You just get on the on the wall. You just exist. We got another OG. I think this is pretty much has been like back to back OGs. <laughs> Immortal. You can go next to Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> what an honor. I don't know if I told you, uh, Write Me Poetry mm -hmm. is doing James Potter series read. Really? On YouTube. Oh, that's so cool. So if you guys like that. the Harry Potter reads, go check out Write Me Poetry because she's doing the James Potter reads with, uh, I think she said a friend from Australia or something. Oh, fun. I yeah. Know that. That's very cool. I have to check them out. I also failed to mention that JD is also an OG. And then I have another OG. I was going to say, I think it goes without saying JD's an OG. <laughs> um, and I have Bookish, who's also OG. Where do you want to go? We should have had like an OG branch. Oh my God. Too late now. I want to put Bookish over here. You can put her wherever you want. I think the cutoff is like, I think it actually goes all the way, right? I would probably just... This would be probably the cutoff. No, the branch goes all the way to my head, so I'm not oh. ever going to cut off half of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good to go all the way out here. Okay. And then Andy Bronco, or Brinko. I like Bronco better. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know what's really great about this? We can kind of just tell people what their names are. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whether or not we're pronouncing it correctly. Like, like, Megan is now Megan Nutella. Ashley is Sashley. Sarah is now Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> uh, next I have Collier Wright. I hope that's how you pronounce that, because I guess that's how we're pronouncing it now. Let's do... You want to put one over here? Yeah. One more over here? One. Put it... Right here? Fun. Next, Chris Cowley. Boom. You go for a little double, double up in a spot, you know? Make it look like. Oh, a bunch hell yeah, of baby. And then, I have Noah Clemenson. Oh, maybe. Oh, I just realized I put Noah and Nicole next to each other. That's fun. I love a good alliteration. And next we have Hannah. Sorry, Hannah. I can't pronounce your last name. Give it a whirl. Pot 
Tiger, Patiger, 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 Patiger. I don't know. Looks French. It says JD. <laughs> And a party the beef and the <laughs> Mr. Mooie. Crystal Kachi. Bailey Butler. Micah Change. Where's he going? I don't fucking know. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, how fucking, like, uh, suspenseful or bad payoff words. <laughs> I think that's it. I just one more. Yep, last, last but, one. Last but not least, Alucard Shade Slayer. Nice. Nice. Because when Alucard changes his name to, like, match the book we're reading. Oh, no. Changes his name to Alucard Darling. <laughs> Look! It's done! The tree's decorated! Can y'all see? Can y'all see the leaves? Oh, they kind of blend in. Uh-oh. We'll just spike the saturation on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's names are up there now. And then as uh, more patrons come in, we'll add your name and, you know, we'll do like a little break. A little segment. A little Patreon said segment. And then if you un-Patreon, then... Well, your leaf will fall off. <laughs> Sad. Sad. <laughs> All right, you ready to start this, dude? Yeah. We don't get a freaking Demi's recap. It feels weird not having one. I feel like a little bit weird reading a different story. Isn't this cool? It's my bookmark. And also every fiend book club's never bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. The, uh... Illustration it says Peter and Wendy. I think that was the original title of the book. Was, was it Peter? really? I believe so. Oh shit. Chapter one. Aragon awoke to find himself in the Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Got her. <laughs> Chapter one, Peter breaks through. All children, except one, grow up. What a what an iconic start to a book, just saying. Oh, it's so good. Dude, I love children's stories. They soon know that they will grow up, and the way Wendy knew was this. One day when she was two years old, she was playing in a garden, and she plucked another flower and ran with it to her mother. I suppose she must have looked ra rather delightful, for Mrs. Darling put her hand to her heart and cried, Oh, why can't you remain like this forever? This was all that passed between them on the subject, but henceforth Wendy knew that she must grow up. You always, you always know after you are two. Two is the beginning of the end. This is so sad. Imagine being like a little kid and like literally all you're two years old. Your entire life is two years long. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're like, you don't know. Well, hopefully it's longer. Up, But up until this point. <laughs> it has only been two years. It has years, only been yeah. two years. And so like you don't really know anything else. Like you have no real experience of the world. And then for your parent to be like, I wish you could be like this forever. And you're like, things are going to change. Like that's <laughs> hor horrifying. What? Nani? <laughs> Of course they lived at 14, and until Wendy came, her mother was the chief one. Mm, Old-timey speak. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
She was a lovely lady with a romantic mind and such a sweet mocking mouth. Her romantic mind was like the tiny boxes, one within the other, that come from the puzzling east. However, many you discover there is always one more, and her sweet mocking mouth had one kiss on it that Wendy could never get, though there it was, perfectly conspicuous in the right-hand corner. Old timey speak. <laughs> He's a writer. He's speaking romantically. Mm. Like artistically. The only thing I can assume that when he means like there was a kiss she could never get in the right hand corner of her mother's mouth was like a romantic kiss and not like a kiss for like a family member. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we all know. Right. Clearly. Oh. We could. (laughs) The way Mr. Darling won her was this. The many gentlemen who had been boys when she was a girl discovered simultaneously that they loved her, and they all ran to her house to propose to her, except Mr. Darling, who took a cab and nipped in first, and so he got her. Dude, work smarter, not harder, baby. He got all of her, except the innermost box and the kiss. He never knew about the box, and in time he gave up trying for the kiss. Wendy thought Napoleon could have got it, but I can picture him trying, and then going off in a passion, slamming the door. Mr. Darling used to boast to Wendy that her mother not only loved him, but respected him. He was one of those deep ones who know about socks and... <laughs> socks? Stocks and shares. <laughs> he he knows, knows all about socks. <laughs> He's a very good man. He knows about socks. That's how I picked you. You told me all about socks, and I was like, he's a keeper. Of course, no one really knows, but he quite seemed to know, and he often said stocks were up and shares were down in a way that would have made any woman respect him. Of course, no one really knows. It's a fagazi. A fake, like a sham. It's not real. It's not real. Fairy dust. (laughs) (laughs) Mrs. Darling was married in white, and at first... She kept the books perfectly, almost gleefully, as if it were a game. Not so much as a Brussels sprout was missing, but by and by, whole cauliflowers dropped out, and instead of them, there were pictures of babies without faces. She drew them when she should have been totting up. They wore Mrs. Darling's guesses. Wendy came first, then John, then Michael. For a week or two after Wendy came, it was doubtful whether they would be able to keep her, as she was another mouth to feed. Mr. Darling was frightfully proud of her, but he was very honorable, and he sat on the edge of Mrs. Darling's bed, holding her hand and calculating expenses, while she looked at him imploringly. She wanted to risk it, come what might, but this was not his way. His way was, his way was with a pencil and a piece of paper, and if she confused him with suggestions, he had to begin at the beginning again. Um, can I just say that maybe after the baby's born is not the time to think about whether you can or cannot afford a baby? <laughs> I don't know if that's like the time to be calculating that expense. Well, obviously it all worked out because they had two more after Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> they were clearly able to afford children. Now, don't interrupt, he would beg of her. I have one pound, 17 here, and two and six at the office. I can cut off my coffee at the office, say 10 shillings, make two nine and six with your 18 and three makes three nine seven with five not not in my checkbook makes eight nine seven. Who is that moving? Eight nine seven dot and carry seven. Don't speak my own and the pound you lent to that man who came to the door. Quiet child dot and carry child. There, you've done it. Did I say nine nine seven? Yes, I said nine nine seven. The question is, can we try it for a year on nine nine seven? Nine hundred and ninety seven dollars? Is it like ninety nine pounds seven pence? Seven shillings? Seven I don't really understand. <laughs> I just like don't understand Europe not Europe, the English people money. I think isn't like a pound and a isn't the isn't a pound the same thing as like a pint or something? In an ounce. <laughs> Are you telling me that they measure their money via beer? No. Yes. That's how I would like to measure my money. How much money you got in the bank? Mm, about 20 cases. <laughs> <laughs> of course we can, George, she cried. 
but she was prejudiced in Wendy's favor, and he was really the grander character of the two. Remember mumps? He warned her, almost threateningly, and off he went again. Mumps one pound. That is what I have put down. But I dare say it will be more than thirty shillings. Don't speak. Measles one five. German measles half a guinea. Makes two fifteen six. Don't waggle your finger. Whooping cough. Say fifteen shillings. And so on it went. And it added up differently each time. But at last Wendy just got through. With mumps reduced to twelve six. And the two kinds of measles treated as one. A what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like talking about the cost of like medical care. Okay. And then she ended up only having measles and mumps. And not whooping cough. Not whooping cough. Or and then they treated two measles as one type of measles. So she's like, she, she's medically. good. There was the same excitement over John and Michael had even a narrower squeak, but both were kept and soon, you might have seen the three of them going in a row to Miss Folsom's kindergarten school, accompanied by their nurse. Mrs. Darling loved to have everything just so, and Mr. Darling had a passion for being exactly like his neighbors. So, of course, they had a nurse. As they were poor, owing to the amount of milk the children drank, this nurse was a prim Newfoundland, Newfoundland, Newfoundland dog called Nana who had belonged to no one in particular until the darlings engaged her. She had always thought children important, however, and the darlings had become acquainted with her in Kensington Gardens, where she spent most of her spare time peeping into perambulators, and was much hated by careless nursemaids, whom she followed to their homes and complained of to their mistresses. This is a children's book? There's some, like, not, like, big words, but just... Bigger words. The perambulator is, or the tur, whatever. How the fuck ever you pronounce that? It's just a bassinet, like a little baby bassinet, pusher carrier, whatever the fuck those are called. Is this a children's book or is this a book you read to a children? I think you read it to a children. <laughs> Demi, child, to a child. Mm, I'd read it to a children. Is this a children's book or a book you'd read to a child? I'm going to go back in, edit that in, make you sound like you said children. That's fucked up. Got her. Like, is this a children's book or a book about children? You know what I mean? A book about children you'd read to a child? No. To a children. No. Like, is it a book for children, like meant to be read to children? Or is it just a book about children? I think it is a children's story, though. Like four kids. Whoa, James Matthew J.M. was a Scottish novelist. Well, I wonder if that's where some of the weird, wacky, weird words come from. I won't even be able to understand it. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where he's like a kiss in the corner of her mouth. Really, he's like, Oh, God, that Casey, I can't even mind him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> if it was meant for a play, then it probably wouldn't have been targeted towards children. It would right? have probably been just for anyone, I would guess. It was for the people. Because <laughs> that was uh, that was some complaints I saw. The fact that we were reading Peter Pan. I was like, well, that's a children's story. I don't want to read a child's story. I was like, we just read Aragon for four years. <laughs> I'm sorry that the magic of childhood is still alive in my heart. She proved to be quite a treasure of a nurse. How thorough she was at bath time. And up at any moment of the night, in one of her charges, made the slightest cry. Of course, her kennel was in the nursery. She had a genius for knowing when a cough is a thing to have no patience with, and when it needs stalking around your throat. You hungry? Yeah, I'm a little hungry. <laughs> Fuck, we're not even, like, you know, through the first chapter, and we're already fucking hungry. Dude, you know how I be. Like, just sitting down here makes you hungry. <laughs> she believed to her last day in old-fashioned remedies like rhubarb leaf, had made sounds of contempt over all this newfangled talk about germs and so on. It was a lesson in propriety to see her escorting the children to school, walking sedately by their side, when they were well behaved and butting them back into line if they stayed. Strayed. Yes. Fun fact. So, 1911, like the early 1900s, that was the Victorian era. The Victorian era is when there were a lot of medical advances, like scientific advances, and this is the time period when germs were discovered. Oh, really? Germs did not exist before this. That's when we found out that germs existed. So that's the comment where she's like, she's a fucking dog. But 
she's like scoffing that oh germs whatever what even is that this is but it's tangled. also funny because like to a dog yeah it i think it's like kind of like a double meaning Entendre. there <laughs> double meaning that like she's a dog so she wouldn't care about germs but it's also like topical for the time probably comparing people that don't believe in germs to dogs that's a little rude but whatever on John's footer days, she never once forgot his sweater, and she usually carried an umbrella in her mouth in case of rain. There is a room in the basement of Miss Folsom's school where the nurses wait. They sat on forms while Nana lay on the floor, but that was the only difference. They affected to ignore her as of an inferior social status to themselves, and she despised their light talk. She resented visits to the nursery from Mrs. Darling's friends, but if they did come, she first whipped off Michael's pinafore and put him into one of the blue braiding and smoothed out Wendy and made a dash at John's hair. I love the, like, personification of this dog. Like, she's a dog. I just yeah. love it. It's just, it but feels so magical. But she's like a fucking nurse. Yeah. Freya. What are you, you doing? shoes to fill. <laughs> no nursery could possibly have been conducted more correctly, and Mr. Darling knew it yet he sometimes wondered uneasily whether the neighbors talked. He had his position in the city to consider. Nana also troubled him in another way. He had sometimes... He had sometimes a feeling that she did not admire him. I know she admires you tremendously, George, Mrs. Darling would assure him, and then she would sign to the children to be specially nice to father. Like, sign to them, like... <laughs> <laughs> Lovely dances followed, in which the only other servant, Lisa, was sometimes allowed to join. Such a midget she looked in her long skirt and maid's cap, though she had sworn, when engaged, that she would never see ten again. What? Never see ten again? I don't get it. I don't know, man. I feel like that's a Scottish linguistic thing. That's gotta be. Maybe I should read it in a Scottish accent. Maybe oh, we would <laughs> make more sense. The gaiety of those romps and gayest of all was Mrs. Darling, who would pirouette. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm Americanizing that word. Pirouette. Dangle, dangle, pirouetting. <laughs> I like to pirouette with the cold one at a tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> so wildly that all you could see of her was the kiss. And then if you had dashed at her, you might have got it. There never was a simpler, happier family until the coming of Peter Pan. That took a fucking turn. Jeez. <laughs> We're all fucking pirouetting and dancing around and people are kissing each other. And then Peter Pan, hide Peter your Pan. kids, hide your wife. <laughs> Mrs. Darling first heard of Peter when she was tidying up her children's minds. It is the nightly custom of every good mother after her children are asleep to rummage in their minds and put things straight for the next morning repacking into their proper places the many articles that have wandered during the day. If you could keep awake, but of course you can't, you would see your own mother doing this, and you would find it very interesting to watch her. It is quite like tidying up drawers. You would see her on her knees, I expect, lingering humorously over, one of, over some of your contents, wondering where on earth you had picked this thing up, making discoveries sweet and not so sweet, pressing this to her cheek as if it were a nice kitten, and hurriedly stowing that out of sight. When you wake in the morning, the naughtiness and evil passions with which you went to bed have been folded up small and placed at the bottom of your mind, and on the top, beautifully aired, are spread out your prettier thoughts, ready for you to put on. This is so sweet. That's so sweet that your mother's yeah. like tidying up your mind, and you're like, she's like, no, 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 no. Butterflies, sweet things. I just, I love how coo, coo, coo. <laughs> like truly it feels like this is from the point of view of like a child viewing yeah. the world and it just is so i don't know endearing or it almost seems like because <clears throat> it definitely seems like a narration of what like a narration of how an adult would remember or reminisce on viewing the moments of like how mm -hmm. their parents act or something you know yeah it's definitely like a very like distorted point of view mm -hmm. a 
of something, but in like the most magical way possible. <clears throat> but it also seems like metaphorical too. So it's like, man, it's not wrong. I don't know whether you have ever seen a map of a person's mind. Doctors sometimes draw maps of other parts of you and your own map can become intensely interesting, but catch them trying to draw a map of a child's mind, which is not only confused, but keeps going around all the time. There are zigzag lines on it, just like your temperature on a card. And these are probably roads in the island. For the Neverland is always more or less an island, with astonishing splashes of color here and there, and coral reefs and rakish-looking craft in the offing, and savages and lonely lairs, and gnomes who are mostly tailors, and caves through which a river runs, and princes with six elder brothers and a hut fast going to decay, and one very small old lady with a hooked nose. It would be an easy map if that were all, but there is also first day at school, religion, fathers, the round pound, needlework, murders, hangings, verbs that take the date of chocolate pudding day, getting into braces, say 99, three pence for pulling out your tooth yourself, and so on. And either these are part of the island, or, th or they are another map showing through and it is all rather confusing, especially as nothing will stand still. That was, like, so chaotic. <laughs> of course, the Neverlands vary a good deal. John's, for instance, had a lagoon with flamingos flying over it at which John was shooting, while Michael, who was very small, had a flamingo with lagoons flying over it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so they're both dreaming of flamingos flying over a lagoon, but Michael's shooting them. John's not. Oh, okay. John lived in a boat turned upside down on the sands. Michael in a wig wigwam. Wendy in a house of leaves deftly sewn together. John had no friends. Michael had friends at night. Wendy had a pet wolf forsaken by its parents. But on the whole, the Neverlands had a family resemblance. And if they stood still in a row, you could say of them that they have each other's nose, and so forth. On these magic shores, children at play are forever beaching their coracles. It's kind of magical that it's like changing by itself. Wow. The magic of Neverland, perhaps. <laughs> or ghosts. Or shorting, something shorting out. We too have been there. We can still hear the sound of the surf. Though, we shall land. No more. Of all delectable islands, the Neverland is the snuggest and most compact. Not large and sprawling, you know, with tedious distances between one adventure and another but nicely crammed. When you play at it by day, with the chairs and tablecloth, it is not in the least alarming, but in the two minutes before you go to sleep it becomes very real. That is why there are night lights. Occasionally in her travels through her children's minds, Mrs. Darling found things she could not understand, and of these quite the most perplexing was the word Peter. She knew of no Peter, and yet he was here and there in John and Michael's minds, while Wendy's began to be scrawled all over with them. The name stood out in bolder letters than any of the other words, and as, Mrs. D and as Mrs. Darling gazed, she felt that it had an oddly cocky appearance. <laughs> yes, he is rather cocky, Wendy admitted with regret. Her mother had been questioning her. But who is he, my pet? He is Peter Pan, you know, mother. At first, Mrs. Darling did not know. But after thinking back into her childhood, she just remembered a Peter Pan who had said to live with the fairies. There were odd stories about him. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> it's like a little aggressive. Let's get like a different fucking mode. There were odd stories about him as that when children died, he went part of the way with them so that they should not be frightened. She had believed in him at the time, but now that she was married and full of sense, she quite doubted whether there was any such person. Besides, she said to Wendy, he would be grown up by this time. Oh no, he isn't grown up, Wendy assured her confidently. He is just my size. She meant that he was her size in both mind and body. She didn't know how she knew. She just knew it. Mrs. Darling consulted Mr. Darling, but he smiled. But he smiled poo-poo. <laughs> <laughs> Mark my words, he said. It is some nonsense Nana has been putting into their heads. Just the sort of idea a dog would have. Leave it alone, then it will blow over. Fucking dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, have you been putting ideas in my head of Peter Pan? 
course he has. But it would not blow over, and soon the troublesome boy gave Mrs. Darling quite a shock. Children have the strangest adventures without being troubled by them. For instance, they may remember to mention, a week after the event happened, that when they were in the wood, that they had met their dead father and had a game with him. It is in this casual way that Wendy one morning made a disquieting revelation. Some leaves of a tree had been found on the nursery floor, which certainly were not there when the children went to bed, and Mrs. Darling was puzzling over them when Wendy said, with a tolerant smile, I do, I do believe it is that Peter again. Whatever do you mean, Wendy? It is so naughty of him not to wipe his feet, Wendy said, sighing. She was a tidy child. She explained in quite a matter-of-fact way that she thought Peter sometimes came to the nursery in the night and sat on the foot of her bed and played on his pipes to her. Unfortunately, she never woke, so she didn't know how she knew. She just knew. What nonsense you talk, precious. No one can get into the house without knocking. I think he comes in by the window, she said. My love, it is three floors up. Were not the leaves at the foot of the window, mother? It was quite true. The leaves had been found very near the window. Mrs. Darling did not know what to think, for it all seemed so natural to Wendy that you could not dismiss it by saying she had been dreaming. My child, the mother cried, why did you not tell me of this before? I forgot, said Wendy lightly. <laughs> she was in a hurry to get her breakfast. <laughs> oh, why it just slip my mind? Oh, surely she must have been dreaming. But on the other hand, there were the leaves. Mrs. Darling examined them very carefully. They were skeleton leaves, but she was sure they did not come from any tree that grew in England. She crawled about the floor, peering at it with a candle for marks of a strange foot. She rattled the poker up the chimney and tapped the walls. She let down a tape from the window to the pavement, and it was a sheer drop of 30 feet without so much as a spout to climb up. Bye. How did he get up there? It's almost like he flew up that, or wait, flew in, <laughs> flew up that window, flew in the window. Flew right up that window. <laughs> Certainly, Wendy had been dreaming, but Wendy had not been dreaming, as the very next night showed, the night on which the extraordinary adventures of these children may be said to have begun. On the night we speak of all the children were once more in bed, it happened to be Nana's evening off, and Mrs. Darling had bathed them and sung them till one by one they had let go her hand and slid away into the land of sleep. It's land of sleep. Land of sleep. All were looking so safe and cozy that she smiled at her fears now and sat down tranquilly by the fire to sew. It was something for Michael, who on his birthday was getting into shirts. What? 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 Well, because Michael's like a baby. And in this time period, little boys wore, like, dresses? I thought John was a baby. I thought John. I thought it was Wendy, John, Michael. I thought it said John was younger. Um, John's, for instance, had a lagoon with flamingos flying over it, which John was shooting, while Michael, who was very small, had a flamingo with lagoons flying over it. Michael's the baby. Who Michael was very small. Yes, Michael's a baby. He's probably, like, two or three. Oh, so Michael's younger. Yeah, he's a baby. What was I saying? Was I saying John and Zinger? Oh, okay. So, um, in this time... Michael baby, John, John not baby. Yeah. So, um, in this time period, little boys wore dresses up until they were, like, two or three. And so now he's probably wearing, like, actual shirts and oh. not the little, like, baby dresses. <clears throat> it was something for Michael, who on his birthday was getting into shirts. Thank God we have somebody that understands fashion and history and life. Thank God, Freya. The fire was warm, however, and the nursery dimly lit by three nightlights, and presently the sewing lay on Mrs. Darling's lap. Then her head nodded, oh, so gracefully. She was asleep. Look at the four of them, Wendy and Michael over there, John here, and Mrs. Darling by the fire. There should have been a fourth nightlight. While she slept, she had a dream. She dreamt that the Neverland had come too near and that a strange boy had broken through from it. He did not alarm her, for she thought she had seen him before in the faces of many women who have no children. Perhaps he is to be found in the faces of some mothers also. 
but in her dream, he had rent the film that obscures the Neverland, and she saw Wendy and John and Michael peeping through the gap. The dream by itself would have been a trifle, but while she was dreaming, the window of the nursery blew open, and a boy did drop on the floor. He was accompanied by a strange light, no bigger than your fist, which darted around the room like a living thing, and I think it must have been this light that wakened Mrs. Darling. She started up with a cry, and saw the boy, and somehow she knew at once that he was Peter Pan. If you or I or Wendy had been there, we should have seen that he was very like Mrs. Darling's kiss. He was a lovely boy, clad in skeleton leaves, and the juices that ooze out of the trees, but the most entrancing thing about him was that he had all his first teeth. When he saw she was a grown-up, he gnashed the little pearls at her. What a wild, feral little kid. <laughs> like, literally a feral little kid <laughs> crashing in through the window, seeing an adult and going, <laughs> It just makes me think of, uh, what's v- Vagabond's kid? Lenny. Lenny. He'll kind of just be like, <sighs> or yeah. Nugget. Yeah. Like little feral boat kids. Just yeah. <laughs> Gnashing their teeth about. I love the depiction of the adults sort of sensing or like reasoning their way out of like this like childhood wonder that still like very clearly ex- like is existing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's still there just even though they're not believing in it. And that like in this like liminal state of her like dreaming that she's like can see it she can like see the like tear into neverland and she can like see her like i don't know it's just see her kids in neverland freya you're so needy you just wake up from your little nap and you go oh i had a dream i was on an island (laughs) there's all these kids playing there was a flamingo with lagoons flying overhead (laughs) i mean a lagoon with flamingos flying overhead yeah, but didn't Michael have a dream of flamingos with a lagoon flying overhead? Oh, did he? That's what you said. Did I? Yeah. I don't remember that. I think that was a very... I I guess, like, spoiler alert, I've read Peter Pan before, but it was a long time ago, and it's just, like, I love the absolute just, like, enchanting nature of how it's written, you know? It is written very, very well. That it... Like, even though it definitely feels like a kid story or something, mm-hmm. it... It also doesn't feel like a kid's story at the same time. I don't feel like my intelligence is being insulted. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like that's, I mean, it is a children's story, but it's written in such a fantastical, like magical way that it's like, I'm on board. And it's only one chapter in. I'm all in, baby. All in, baby. What a great, what a great start. I know we're just like one little chapter in, but I'm like really excited for this book. I think it's just going to be incredible. Yeah, I feel like that was a good first chapter too. Forgot how like a magical this story is. Magic. Wow. Wow. Kind of want to keep reading it. Me too. <laughs> but we can't. That's it. You get one chapter, we're done. <laughs> Jesus. No, that's insane. Our new series is we read the first chapter of book. Jesus. But what is going on? Doesn't say our new series. We read the first chapter of your favorite <laughs> books, and we just stop. And that's it. So we don't get locked into a series for four years. I believe this will not be the case with Peter Pan. And believing is seeing, seeing isn't believing, or some shit like that. I don't <laughs> fucking remember. <laughs> I think that's right on, dude. Hell yeah! You got anything else to add? Nope. I'm just ready to get into the second chapter, which will happen next time. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. If you guys liked the video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you get notified when the next video comes out. And we'll see you in the next one. (laughs) Thought I had something else to say, but I didn't. I was only on time, but I didn't. I was only on time, but I didn't. I was only on time, but I didn't. Put a spell on you. Freya, I see you sleeping over there.